Welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. Needless to say, in today's video, we're going to talk about finally constructing this dream layout. This video is specifically all about the concept I'd like to do. Of course, as we build it, there's always challenges that are thrown in as we go along and we'll deal with them. But at least we're going to lay out what I ideally would love to see happening here. We have a lot to cover in this video, but to be fair, there's only 10 key areas on the layout I want to try and create. We've got a few pictures, a quick description. So why don't we just get into it, shall we? Of course, you all know from the first video all about the cabinet work that we've created. And just while I'm standing here, I just wanted to make a quick point so you know what I'm talking about. We have the main layout itself. We have two ends on it, which according to standard Hornby track radius, we can put two loop, we can actually put four, but two standard loops on them. So basically it's the dog bone configuration where I want to run two active lines that chase around each other. And of course, underneath here, we have another level for our staging yard or fiddle yard or storage, which makes some of the storage I put all those trains in those drawers become a little obsolescent. But needless to say, that's just a bit of fun we're going to have. So let's get into it. So as mentioned before, dream layout is this. We'll come back to that 1978 Hornby catalog. And I do like the exhibition style thing of a plug and play type of layout with not too much complication. Any rail is the free CAD software that most of you are using to design this on a computer. Again, you can be as simple or indeed get as complex as you like. It's a fantastic program, but it is really just useful on a PC only. So as a result, uh, it wasn't quite for me. And like all good software like this, you don't have to do just trains, you can do slot cars as well. Project for another day. But Rail Modeler Pro is what I went for. I like working on my Mac just generally because of the resolution on the screen. Yes, I can build the same thing on a PC, but still, same things. You can choose from all the default track libraries from Hornby and Pico. You can do 3D, you can get complicated, of course, uh, or you can just keep it nice and simple. It'll do the hard work for you. But it's what I used. Again, the previous Hornby track mat I followed, as you know, there's all the parts you need, and of course, it'll tell you exactly where to put them. So I do like the plug and play approach. It saves me time and I do get a nice end result. I'm not going for fine scale detail here. So Rail Modeler Pro, here's my layout as we speak. You can see the L-shaped layout. Here's where I've been noodling around with the entry to going underneath to the fiddle yard. I like to design with set track because it sets the standard of what I can and can't fit into the location. Many of you would be aware of a product called the Track Setter that allows you to achieve the correct radiuses you're chasing, especially when laying flex track. I could go either way. I'm not chasing fine scale and I'm quite happy with the set track. However, as you may be aware, Track Setter doesn't exactly fit the profiles of the Hornby set track. But at nearly half the price of Track Setter, a chap on eBay has 3D printed the exact templates to use for the Hornby radius, which is tremendously useful and I will use just to establish those two return loops and the corners. Right, so we have no completed track plan. It's just to make sure what we can fit in and we'll improve this as we carry on. But importantly, here you can see the baseboard and where you see all that staging yard, that's the underneath. You can see here we put uh, the four track radii together, um, showing that that bit fits. So pip hip array for that. And over here's where we're noodling for the bit to send down to the fiddle yard. I really did want to do a, a single slip in there further up the line, but we'll, uh, this is the best way it's going to fit for the moment. Um, now, uh, as you can see, here's underneath, just roughly that's, it's going to, um, the gradient will start halfway there on that back wall. Um, and we'll fit several tracks under there. I just put a few together to give an example of what we're going to be staging. Most rakes won't be bigger than maybe four to six coaches at most, and six to 16 perhaps freight cars, depending on what it is, maybe box cars, and it could be the big rail freight express ones. Now we'll click that 3D mode and take our way down to where that staging yard is. The program will automatically calculate your inclinations. And uh, as I said, just as a general rule, there's where we are. Our inclination will be 2.1 degrees. 
In fact, it's actually going to be less than that because I've still got about another meter I can stretch out underneath the layout, as you can see here. So as we come down, you can see that slope of angle and attack, and uh, we've got plenty of places to mount that up. So plenty of room here to hold some reasonable sized rakes. This isn't a point to point operation not a great deal of shunting to be happening. I have spent hours looking at this same image, trying to noodle away to make it look cleaner and neater. I think as soon as we start building it, it will start making a bit more sense on that corner. So the only other thing to mention here is that the uh, track running closest to the wall will probably run up a slight gradient on the uh, turns. Now, not probably high enough that it needs to actually clear and under over, just a little bit of raise that I can sort of screen it back a bit behind a backdrop and it'll just be the returning loop at the end of the day. So it will be lifted and that's just for a few other key design aspects I'll be working on. So here it is, the grand plan. It is shaded in different colors. It might not come through well on the computer. It's a two train operation. I wish to be controlling two trains at any one time and keep it nice and simple. I do like the slightly longer rakes of coaches. As I said, not much shunting to be had here. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the scenery. And that pink highlighted numbering system, which we'll quickly step through those images now with you. Right, so here we are. Here's the room, here's the cabinet, beautiful carpet. One, the forestry, taking inspiration from our friend Thomas the Tank Engine in this particular scene in the opening credits, and would like to have a signal box there that's gonna lead onto the fiddle yard. Lush, tall trees make for a shady signal box. Two, Cricket Oval. So in this particular loop in the middle, I did purchase the Pico accessories as seen in that picture. And with the inclination of the track around it, I thought we could have a country cricket club, reminiscent of a scene of the Dad's Army episode where they're out having a game of cricket. Three and four, the country station. It's the absolute focal point of where you're looking on this model railway. Once again, taking inspiration from Thomas the Tank Engine. Very much a station looking identical to this. Notice how it's all flat without that sort of raised ballast. We make way with the lighter ground cover, unlike the yards that see the darker type of stained ballast. Also drawing upon inspiration from a local railway station. Here in the magnificent Flinders Ranges in South Australia it is home to the Pitchy Ritchie Railway and the once exceptionally busy Quorn Railway Station. Many of my trains that would pass through this station would be express or indeed goods trains that very rarely would stop. However, there are some weekly services that would stop and hence the station gets used. Of course, the local community will, of course, come together and be erecting a Christmas tree and seeing, of course, the nostalgic run of some of my steam trains, which, of course, would signify various celebrations that the town has gotten together as a small community to celebrate. And I think it's the perfect excuse for Christmas time when we dust off some of those steam locomotives and bring them out in all their glory to shine just as we do in real life all over the world today. Number five, the lush corner. Gentle, sweeping, lush countryside. It's gonna be a bit tight in that corner, but at the end of the day, just keeping it clean and simple. Some fields, not too many trees, just nice and clear run, no complicated track work. Number six, oil refinery or petroleum depot. Love the overhead pipe work. I have plenty of tankers that I would love to actually stop somewhere. For the most part, this might have to be scrapped, but somehow would try and squeeze something into that corner. Number seven, Faulty Towers Hotel, complete with the flowery twat sign on the front. Well, that's the idea we'll build in this loop here. And here it is actually constructed in Lego. I'm sure we won't make it exactly the same, but we'll get enough detail to make it identifiable. You see the slope there in the land? I think that's going to be good considering there'll be an incline wrapping around. Make it look a little bit like the castle on the hill. Number eight, underneath fiddle or staging yard. Of course, exceptionally self-explanatory, we'll store the locos down there. Of course, as we come down via the gradient, what's interesting, and you can see in this picture neatly, is there was the signal box I'd be doing, and I could do like a single slip that would send it down to the fiddle yard. We'll see how we go. We might have to do a little bit of homework and a bit of building on that. Number nine, an undercover station. But I scrapped that because we can integrate it into number 10. 
Smith's Chips Factory on the upper back pass through. As many of you know, I have devoted my arteries to this institution. It's also one we don't see much at the end of the day. It can be nice and clean in the backdrop, just basically a picture of a building, but it comes into a depot. I want it to be undercovered, similar to as I was planning with the station here, so a train could pass through and be loading up both for accepting and receiving goods such as the salt and the potatoes, and any more than being dispatched on its way out with the end product. As you know in earlier videos, I certainly do have the Smith's wagons, and I do indeed have the salt wagons as well. So it seems like a nice thing. And of course around the bottom of the track, not that there'd be all that much detail you don't see, but maybe just sort of lighten it up with a bit of sort of a white ballast or a dusting so it looks like the sort of salt that would sort of be deposited from the deliveries. The era we're working on here is somewhere around about circa 1950 to 1990. A layout that welcomes both the diesel and the steam era. It also gives me an opportunity to go all the way back and display certainly the green Maunsell coaches of the era. Certainly rest assured there will still be a sea of British Rail Blue to be had. I absolutely adore it. But still... Everything from a Flying Scotsman through to the Intercity 125 Express, they're all going to be here and more than welcoming anyone visiting. Should they be bringing a locomotive from an Australian layout or from the USA? Why not? Let's have some fun. Just trying to keep the scenery reasonably neutral. Yes, it's obviously going to have that British flavour to it, being that we're celebrating Hornby, but... It could be anywhere. Control. I will be using my Hornby Elite DCC controller. While it's getting on in a few years, it's still as fresh as the day it was new. Has all the features I need and a nice simple way to approach two trains operating simultaneously. Yes, we have all the menus to automate and go into things further and control turnout motors and of course with the sound. When it comes to the points, I keep going back and forth. Will I be going with turnout motors from DCC Concepts or will I be going for Tortoise or will I just settle for surface mount switches or will I go to wire in tube? To be honest, the Modratech wire in tube is where I would like to go. There won't be that many points on this layout and there's a sense of connection when you're actually operating the railway. I don't want to connect it to a computer and have it all completely automated. Don't get me wrong, that's my industry. I do enjoy stuff like that. But on this occasion, there's nothing quite like putting your hands on real switches and levers and manipulating things and getting that tactile feedback that we all know and love. And finally, signals. Would like to try and get a signal gantry up there if I possibly can. But in this case, Dapol illuminated semaphores will be the signal of choice. Well, that now concludes another video in this wonderful series. Of course, we've still got a few more we need to get out shortly. We've got another one on the shelving. We're still a bit waiting on the lighting to happening, but we've got plenty of things that we're going to keep carrying on with in the moment. So please enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one. Toodles!